um, I'm going to show you a really quick, um, very basic um, illustrator tutorial on how um, to do a portrait. So you need Illustrator to do this. Um, Photoshop isn't um, doesn't vector, so you need to use Illustrator. So you open Illustrator, and this is an example of what you can create. So this is a portrait I had to um, do for a uni project. Um, and it's simply getting a photo of yourself and tracing over it um, with the pen tool. Um, so you do need to have a basic understanding of how the pen tool, tool works in order to complete this because that's pretty much all you use for this entire thing, um, just vectoring. So if you don't know how to use pen tool, go and seek a tutorial and it will show you all the fantastic abilities of the pen tool. I'll do a really quick demonstration, but yeah, you need to have an idea and probably a bit of a practice tracing over things just to get used to um, getting the shapes right and making sure that you're getting your tracings um, pretty close to the actual image, otherwise it'll just look weird. So first thing that you do is you create a new document. So you go File, New, or you can hit Command um, N. Now I am working on a Mac, so um, my commands will be Mac oriented, but if you're working on a PC, um, instead of command, it's control, and instead of option, it's alt. But everything else should be pretty much the same. So create um, a new document. Print is fine, um, and I'm just going to use A4. It does depend on the size that you want to do, but for the purposes of this, A4 is completely fine. Hit OK. So here is your blank document. So you need to get an image that is high resolution. If that image is just something that you've grabbed off the internet, it's going to look pixelated as all hell. So if I grab something off here, say I do a search for Steve Rogers, just randomly, and say I grab this picture, drag him into Illustrator. If I zoom into him, he starts to look really pixelated and bleh, you don't want that. So you need to get a high resolution photo. Um, so your iPhone selfie just won't really do the trick. It needs to look decent. Go away. All right. So file, place. Find your image. It's going to end up being really massive because it's a really massive file. So zoom all the way out and just resize it. You may need to crop it because if it's a photo, then those photos tend not to be A4. So work out what area it is that you want to um, illustrate. And then hit so you can see there's a cross through it. If you hit Command 2, it'll lock it. Then create... Oh, it's kind of not... Nah, it's fine. Um, then over here, so you can see this box here, it says um, Layers. Hit New Layer. You can create straight over the top of this. That's completely fine. I tend to prefer working on new layers just because it makes life a little bit easier. Um, but that's completely up to you. So hit New Layer. You can see it says New Layer. So over here... You can see there's a bunch of tools. So the ones that you're mostly going to be using is the selection tool, direct selection tool, and pen tool. Now, the amazing thing is that they also tell you their shortcuts. So you can see um, if I hit A, it's going to hit the um, direct selection tool, V, and P for pen, which is kind of nifty. The other things that you need to know are down here, these two little boxes. This is your fill. So if I created something, it's going to fill it with white. Ta-da! Okay, now when you're doing this, if you have a fill on, you're not going to see the picture underneath and that's going to obscure everything. So we need to turn fill off. So see this one with a little line? Click the line. No more fill. Which is good. Don't want fill. This is your stroke. This is what we do want because we want to be able to see what you're doing. So don't turn stroke off um, because you you just won't be able to see what you're doing. So if I demonstrate, I have a um, black stroke on at the moment. You can see there's my vector. There's my vector. And 
And if I turn it off, can't see it. Oh no! So, yeah, make sure that's on. You can use whatever colour is easiest for you. So if you've got a really dark image or something like that, you may want to use like a red or a contrast colour just to make it easier. It doesn't really matter. You're going to change it anyway. This is just for you to trace. Now over here you'll see the stroke panel. Um, I tend to drop my stroke down to about 0.5. I just find that um, it, it's a little bit easier to see, especially once you start getting into details. Like you're going to be drawing eyelashes and hair and all that sort of stuff. And if your stroke line is too thick, it's going to just make things really difficult because you're going to have a big blob of stroke. We don't want that. So there's your things that you need. You need to know how to use a pen tool. So remember with pen tool, you click and then click and pull if you want to go around curves. Click and pull, click and pull, and you can create a, um, any shape. And if you press A, which is a direct select, you'll see it's hollow. I can now click on those points and I can fix them and do whatever I want. Whoa! Um, and edit them, which is kind of nifty. So it means that when you first go in, you've still got a chance to save it. You don't have to like, oh my god, I stopped up. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so, whoops, wrong way. Um, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, press command plus or um, minus, plus, minus. And if you want to go back to original um, view, just press command zero. And if you hold down the space bar, see happy hand and I can drag. So you'll find those really useful. So I'm going to start off on my face. So we click. Remember when you're doing your direction, so if I um, end up going all the way over here and I want to create and go over here, my line is going to go, no, I want to go this way. So um, if I want to get rid of that anchor point, I press Alt or Option and click and it will convert that and get rid of that arm. So now I can go around the corner. Now because I'm heading that slope direction, I can still go around the corner. And it's completely fine. It likes that. Although my nose doesn't, so. So you can see how this becomes a really time consuming, somewhat tedious process. And then you'll start to see vector lines in everything that you, s you look at and you go a little bit insane. Welcome to the world of vectoring. But it is pretty neat because it gives you a really nice clean image. It allows you to enlarge it to whatever size you need. Um, Whereas if you just drew something in Photoshop, if you enlarge that's going to be pixelated because it's rasterized instead of vector. So one thing that I want to make a point of, just for you that um, those of you that may not be aware, is if I wanted to fill this at the moment, I'm just going to end up with a fully colored canvas. I need to close the vector line, otherwise if I hit fill, it doesn't know what to fill, it's going to fill everything. Because it's like, no, but I have like, here you could colour and here you could colour, and that's really bad. So even though it's all hidden behind the hair, which is good because I can cover it up then, I want to continue this line. Um, the other kind of spanky thing about being able to vector is I can give myself a facelift. So I can give myself um, a bit of a bit of a liposuction job get rid of my ugly double chin so you can see that's now filled so if I want to go in and fill that I can if I hit I that gives me the eyedropper tool and I can pick a color and then I can go up here and I can um, click the color double click bring it open and I can make myself all ah, pretty now you can see that if I do that 
I can't see anything that I'm doing. So, get rid of the fill. Turn your colour back on. Uh, your, your line back on. I'm going to drop that down. Then it's a matter of going in, and if I want to edit any of the points, 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 um, I hit um, A, and you can see I can go in and fix those lines up. I can drag the points out if I need to. I can go, whoo, big forehead. That's up to you. So you've got a fair bit of flexibility in terms of editing your points in once you've got them in. Don't be like, oh my god, but I ruined it and I have to keep going back. Just get the thing in there. Then it starts to become a matter of filling it up. So what I tend to do is I fill all of my, I block in all my um, main areas. So for the hair, I would go in, I think I actually did that as two separate blocks. Wrong picture. Um, I did that as one block and I did that as another block. That's another block. Um, so that way, when you go in, you've got a base there and you add all your highlights and your details and whatnot. So you would then go... So you can already see why I wouldn't demonstrate how to do this whole entire thing because it would just take forever. You can go beyond the um, thing but you need to fill it regardless you need to complete the um, vector point. doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to go back over all of those details just block in the main areas that you want blocked in doesn't matter too much I'm going to change directions here so get rid of that And that's your hair blocked in. So then what you would do is to start filling out all of these details is you basically then go and create all of those shapes. It's fun and not. It's time consuming. Um, the hair was probably the nightmarish part of this whole entire thing. Um, it can also take your, um, take your head a little bit to get used to um, sort of working out where the shapes sit. So you can see here, for example, your shadows are built up of all of these different colours. So if you have a look at the, my, my original, you can see the nose. Now again, this depends on how stylized or realistic you want to be. Um, the more realistic, the more, the more lines you're going to end up having to create because you'll create a more of a graduation between those areas. I really liked the stylized. I didn't want it to look like a photo. So I've gone in and created shapes. So you can see that that's a shape, that's a shape, that's a shape. So basically go and work your way in to the heaviest or go the opposite and work your way out um, to the lightest. Um, for some of the really light ones, you can use multiply. So if you go over here, you can see on my side panel over here and you can see transparent. So you can see I've set this to multiply, which, excuse me, is this color 
and then I hit multiply and it just darkens that original color so it gives you that and don't you got to be careful because you got to watch where your layers sit because if I had that sitting on top then you can see how it starts to affect there and that looks really ugly so yeah don't go ridiculous with the multiply it might not work for all purposes but that gives you a bit of an idea so you can see here that I've created my highlights I've got my darker shadows um, the colors that you choose are completely up to you because again it depends on how realistic or how stylized you want to go but it'll help you um, if you go and commit to yes solid shadows and really light um, highlights then it'll give that illusion that yes it is completely 3d and looks realistic and cool now things for like the eyebrows and the eyelashes now they're just basically shapes so you can see how each here is a different shape same as each here is a different shape my eyebrows because they're so light if you have a look on the photo you can hardly even see them um, so you could go in and block as one big color and then go in and add the strands that's completely up to you because mine are so light I just did strands so you basically just go in and create kind of like teardrop shaped things like that but smaller now neat trick is instead of doing them over and over again click it if you press um, command and option you'll see I don't know if you can see it properly in here but it gives you a plus sign if you click and drag oh they're clouding having baby multiplying so you can create lots and then you can rotate them and resize them and do whatever you want to do so that way it sort of saves you some time from having to draw your eyebrows over and over and over again same as your eyelashes you can start to skew them so if you draw the eyelash here then I can recreate the eyelash over again and I can distort it or you can just draw them from scratch or whatever it doesn't matter but that's com completely bit. so that's basically how you do them um, and like I said these sh um, shadows are just created by shapes so something like the nose and then you would keep working your, your way out so you can see there's a darker shadow there and another shadow there um, some people like to posterize their images in Photoshop to give them an idea of where those definitions like where those shadows break off into other shadows and so forth um, and that's fine it can sort of distort the image a little bit so it's probably good practice to um, get used to working out where shadows because if you're doing tonal paintings and so forth you sort of need to be able to recognize that but yeah um, it can sort of help just to get get yourself started on how to go about it because that's sort of the tricky part um, and again want to work out your style so that is it in a nutshell like I said it's a very time consuming thing um, so it's basically just going in and creating shapes once you have those shapes then you go in and you fill them so you click on that click on your fill eyedropper it or pick whatever color you want and fill it um, for the hair go a base color so a dark base color and then you're going to go in um, and either lighten it or darken it so for here it's actually quite dark so I'll just use that as an example um, and then you just keep building it up and building it up so that's it in a nutshell it's time consuming um, but it's pretty cool and it's a really neat trick um, because you can do quite simple designs as well as quite complex designs but yeah hopefully that's a little bit helpful um, and yeah Ta -da! yay all right